Hello everybody and welcome back to the FM23 Geisley Youth Academy Only Save and obviously we're not playing any more games. I did say the finale was the last episode and it is the last episode. Uh, so this one, episode 150, we're going to have a quick look back. Now normally I plan my episodes, I haven't really planned this one, so we're just going to see where we end up. Hopefully it's about half an hour long, but uh, yeah. Let's go and let's go and take a look. So starting on the home page, then obviously we've got a slightly different camera thing going on. It's because this is how I set it up for EAFC on the second channel, and I just couldn't be asked to move everything. So you're gonna have to deal with it. Um, yeah, starting on the home page, we finished the the previous season or the last season we had in tenth. But you know we brought this club a long way, a long long way. So I think what we can do is go in and have a look at. The club history, basically. A bit of the overview. I mean, it doesn't even go far. I never knew you could compare with another club. Did you ever know you could do that? There you go. I've just found that. Wow. Okay. Excellent. Um, yeah, it goes so far back, you can't even get to our history. This starts in th the year 2039-2040, where we're in the championship, where we spent one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine seasons in the championship, finishing second, getting into the Premier League, where we had finishes of, what, 16th, 16th, 13th, 15th, 5th, 8th, 6th, 8th, 13th, 4th, third and then tenth this year obviously the closest we came to winning it was last season we'll go and have a look at that table and stuff now view history oh here we go so all the way back at the start of this save which would have been oh my word when did this happen national league would have been around here national league what year what game is this 2023 now it'd be up here dave you idiot um 2020 to 23 National League North. They just got promoted, didn't they? I th yeah, that yeah, because there's a there's a season missing there. There's a season missing. So we took them over in the National League North, finished 18th, just about surviving relegation. 13th, 12th, 9th, 1st. We won the league in the National League North. 18th, 17th, 15th, 8th, 1st. We won the league in the National League. Uh, fifth, we finished fifth in our first season in League Two. Wow! Uh, then we finished second and got automatic promotion. League One, thirteenth, fourth, a big crash down to fourteenth, and then second to get promoted. Wow, we actually climbed with not many winning many leagues, isn't it? Championship, nineteenth, eighteenth, sixteenth, twenty-first, seventeenth. That was some hard-going seasons. Thirteenth, eleventh, tenth, second, got us into the Premier League, and then we went into the Premier League as well. Our highest ever point scoring season was 99 points where we won the National League North. One point shy of 100 points, which is quite impressive. Uh, and in the National League, we also hit 95 points, the Evo Stick Premier, which wasn't us um, as well. So yeah, a little look back about that sort of history. I mean, records is, I think, a good thing to look at. Most league goals by a player ever, Taron Allpress. Taron Allpress, and he is now the assistant manager at Eastleigh, which is quite nice, because they were a feeder club for us, I think, Eastleigh. But um, he's not too bad, actually. People management, player ability, potential, level-headed. He's two and a half stars, a national recognised assistant manager, which is really good. Yeah, he was um, us through and through, wasn't he? Then he moved to Ipswich, completely didn't work out for him. 17 goals in 38, 23 in 40, 16 in 40, 24 in 36 in League One. That's very good. And 20 and 37 um, as well. His best season was that one in League One, scoring 24 goals in 36. So, yeah, Taron Allpress is there. Uh, most overall goals by a player in a season. Crimson Mori has 40. Most league appearances by a player. Scott Lloyd. Now, if you're not aware, Scott Lloyd is the manager of the Youth Academy Challenge with Gillingham on the second channel. Go check it out. It's good fun. Um, he is the only player I've ever seen in Football Manager that is not... The, where it doesn't already start with a retired shirt to get a retired shirt. So Scott Lloyd was ridiculous for us, wasn't it? He had uh, a, a goalkeeper. We actually don't have his history, but he, 810 appearances over 22 years for Scott Lloyd. That is incredible. Never capped by Wales. It is a catastrophe that that never happened. Scott Lloyd was an absolute 
hero, wouldn't he? Uh, Scott Lloyd has spent his entire career at Geisley, joining in May 2023 and making a total of 810 league appearances since breaking into the first team set up in 2027. During his tenure, Lloyd's team won the Vanarama National League in 2033 and the Money Please in 2033 and 2040. Yeah, that's when we just invited bigger teams to come and give us loads of money. Wow. Born in Newton on the 8th of April 2011, in a playing career which spanned 25 years, Lloyd made 810 appearances and he made his senior debut in the Vanarama National Indoor playing for Geisel against Alfredton on the 29th of April 2028. Wow. Scott Lloyd, what a legend. Um, most league goals by a player in the season is Adam Hoare. He was an original player that we had at the club. That's crazy that he's still a record holder for us that's really crazy highest average rating phil carney doing a fantastic job either on left wing or striker yeah very very good season there's 7.2 7.47 that year 21 goals in 35 games and that was the year we came closest to winning the league uh, youngest player stephen harris oldest player scott lloyd fastest goal taron all press cameron thorpe getting five goals in a match against flit flid flyled however you pronounce it um 8th of December 2012, broke into the team, 21 years, 2025 to 2046, went on to play for Barnsley, one goal in 11, Scarborough, five in 44, and Cambridge, two in 46. He hit 111 goals for us, one in four, roughly, for Geisley, a bit less, one in 3.5, something like that. But um, yeah, the Vanarama National League with Geisley, the Vanarama National League South with Barnet, and the Money Please Cup in 2033 and 2040 which is uh, lovely. Cameron Thorpe, there's a player I'd forgotten about. Bloody hell. Uh, Jeff Hogg is the most assists by a player. He is the current Jeff Hogg because they've changed names, haven't they? Carlos Victoriano, most clean sheets by a player. Phil Carney, most player of the match awards. Youngest goal scorer, Job McKenzie. Oh my word. This guy came through the youth team really early on and... Uh, it must have been one of our first seasons he came through the year. 2023 till 2029 he played for us. And he came through and had pace like 19 or 20. Oh my word. Yeah, it was incredible to see him come through. I got really excited. Four goals in 33 was a bit disappointing. He went on to play a 441 times for Mahayaka where he'll be a legend there. 133 goals for them. But that's... That's awesome. I've completely forgot about Job McKenzie. Uh, an oldest goal scorer, Lewis Salt, a central midfielder rock for us. Came through in 2023, um, played for the first team in 2024. 661 appearances, 15 goals. The only club he played for. He can be gutted that he didn't get a shirt number retired in his honour. Uh, again, he was part of the Vanarama National League winning team, the Vanarama National League North winning team, and uh, the Money Please Cups, which is so funny they put that in here, isn't it? But 15 goals in 661 appearances. Lewis Salt was club captain, I think, as well. I think he was very, very good. Made his debut against Boston in 2025. Wow. I'm so glad I looked at this page. This is, this is really, this is cool. This is really cool. Um, so all players then. So most overall goals by player of the season, Jake Cassidy. He was a starting player. He was very, very good for Geisley when we started using him. Adam Hall, Matt O'Keefe, our big first sale to Wimbledon, wasn't it? 101 goals in 190 appearances, and then it just dried up for him. Went to Wimbledon, didn't really make it. Moved to Gateshead and then Notts County and retired. But yeah, Matt O'Keefe was awesome for us, wasn't he? He was really good. Taron Allpress then led the goal scoring charts for a while. Yevgen Vitalens, the uh, Latvian, wasn't he? Oh, my word, yeah. He came through, went on a couple of loan spells, came back 38 in 148, and then a uh, little stint at Grimsby, then moved on to play in Latvia. Oh, my word, this is amazing. Josh Wallace was in there. He was the original Crimson Mori. And he was our big money sale, £14.5 million to Everton. Uh, then he moved to Wolves, £48 million to Man City. And he's just moved to Saudi Arabia where he's absolutely banging in the goals. But yeah, Josh Wallace was there. vitalin has got it again. Graham Cox, another one who for some reason played at Fleetwood before us. It must have been alone. That must have been alone. Um, 
Graham Cook started his career at Guysley, breaking into the first team in 2034. He'd spent time on loan at Fleetwood. Um, Cox's Guysley team lifted the money, please, in 2040. He joined Dover Athletic and made 81 appearances. 490 appearances. This is amazing. Brian Swamba. This was the original Supreme Dave, hailing from Mauritius. 507 appearances, 104 goals. Again, another one. Could be unlucky that he didn't get a shirt number retired. 507 appearances. Went to Scunthorpe after that and played a couple of times. And then we get into the modern day with Crimson Mori, Andrew Neeson, Phil Carney uh, and Jeff Hogg getting in there as well. Unbelievable stuff. Uh, most assists by a player in a season. Nicky Walker, Addy Kellett, Callum Chippendale, Shane Tarmy. Oh, he was he was fucking banging for us, Shane Tarmy. He was brilliant. Cameron Thorpe up there, Lewis Salt. Tim Rocket, absolute speedy guy on the right-hand side. I remember him, 129 appearances, moved to Barnsley, didn't play, and then moved to the Republic of Ireland to play for Finn Harps, where he's probably a legend there. Um, Shane Stitt, oh, he was a good little player as well. I think he was on the left. I think it was Rocket on the right and Stitt on the left. Jimmy Curran was definitely a left winger. 248 appearances for us was the most he made for anyone. He did get some games at Galway and Bray before retiring as well. Uh, Graham Cox was just such a good player. Yeah, I know we've already looked at him, but he was such a good player for us. Fatu Amchipong playing off the left, really rapid. Halifax Town on loan played for us. Again, most appearances was for us and the most goals. Um, he moved to Asante Kotoko, who I think I think we actually got a bit of money for him. Didn't keep his history, but yeah, and then ended up back in England playing for Rotherham. Uh, Conrad Sass is a name I don't recognise. He's still playing. He's at the Newcastle Jets. Is he? We've only sold him recently or released him recently as well. Wow, he um, that can't be right. He had the most assists in the season that year with six. That can't be right because. I don't really remember playing him. Um, and then we have Alpha Koff, who was just came through, had amazing passing and technique, which got him loads of assists. Carl Kennedy, the doc, we sold him for big money to Shakhtar as well. £14.25 million. Pounds. He's ripping it up in the Ukraine. Lovely stuff there for him. Uh, Mossometi, oh, probably my favourite player of the save, to be honest. Maybe. Maybe, I'm not sure. But he was very, very good. I was so excited when he th came through. Neeson, Aaron Gray is up there. Jeff Hogg and Phil Carney. Um, is there anything at average ratings? I assume this will be with uh, just as it was. Brooklyn Christie. Oh, my word. Yeah, he moved to Morgan. We got a decent amount for him, like 500k, I think, for him. Shane Tommy. Malik Priestnell, a really tall centre-back. 370 appearances. Priestnell played for us. Chris Fearon, attacking midfielder, right midfielder. It's amazing when you click on their name how you remember them and what they've done. Brian Swammer, Nathan McGowan. He was a Patreon, but I can't remember which Patreon it was or channel member. You can see he had to wait for his moment, didn't he? One, one appearance conceded two as a goalkeeper. One appearance conceded two. Geisley, zero appearances. Back to Geisley, 222 appearances. Maybe that was Jan Petrick. That may have been Jan Petrick that year because you did just sort of step into the Premier League straight away. Oh my god, this is fans player of the year. This will be interesting. George Sikora, centre back, Newcourt County bought him off us uh, on a free transfer. Jake Castley, Adam Hoare, Callum Chibidon, Shane Tarmy, Matt O'Keefe, Brooklyn Christie, Danny Adams, Malik Priestnell, Chris Veeran, All Press, Graham Cox, Scott Lloyd getting it one, two, three, four, five, five times in the row. Shane Stitt, Brian Swammer, Nathan McGowan is the goalkeeper, so he obviously did do very well. Neeson, McGowan, McGowan, Neeson, 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 Crimson Mori, Crimson Mori, Carney, Neeson, Hogg. Bloody hell, this is this is really good. This is really good. Obviously, the team ended really good. Worldwide reputation, very professional squad, um, in a really, really good position. And we got lots of the uh, facilities and stuff sorted as well. Uh, training facilities, 20. Youth facilities, 18. Youth recruitment, 20. Junior coaching, 20. Um, we, we changed the kits every so often throughout it as well. It was really, really good fun, wasn't it? It was really, really good fun. I ended as a 75-year-old earning 130 grand a week. That is the dream, isn't it? That would be lovely. Um, so, I mean, looking at competitions... We, um, let's go honours. We look at the honours. So Champions League runners up back to back. That's what sort of broke my spirit, I think. 2060 and 2061 
we finished at Champions League runners up. 2060 was our best place finish in the Premier League, which was third. Europa League 2059, we won it. 2057, we were runners up. Runner up in the Super Cup in 2059. Runner up in the Skybet Championship in 2040. Winner of the Conference League in 2058. We absolutely annihilated that competition. Winner of the Carabao Cup twice, 2050, uh, 2056 and 2057. Runner up in Skybet League One. Runner up in Skybet League Two. Winner of the UEFA Youth League in 2060 and runner up in 2057. Winner of the Vanarama National League. Winner of the Papa John's Trophy twice. Uh, runner up in the Builder Base FA Trophy. We didn't even win that when we we're in non league. Uh, Vanarama National League Law. We won that in 2028. Um, the under 18s Premier League. We've won it four times 52, 53, 58, and 60. Uh, the under 18s Youth Alliance Cup. We won it in 2031, 2034, and then runner up in 2035 and 2040. Um, we won. Our youth team actually won loads. I'm not going to go through all of that. But, yeah, unbelievable stuff, isn't it? So, landmarks, you can you can see them all here. This is listing all of them. I'm not too fussed about facilities. But, yeah, competitions. There it is, dating all the way back to 2028. So, five years it took us to win the National League North. Yeah. We won the Builder Base Trophy in 2031. We went up as Vanarama National League champions in 2033. So, we're five years to get to that. Five years to win that and then it was two years and we went up from league two four years went up from league one uh three or oh, so, no nine years then we got to the championship championship we sorry no it's not yes it was nine years then nine years again to get us to the premier league we won the carabao cup and that which is really really good um weirdly actually we never had a takeover the only takeover we had was the fans' trust, and then it just went from promotions with within in the board. And I also think it's quite strange to go for, what, 30-something years, 38 seasons, and only have four owners. Normally you would see a, um, a sort of oligarch coming in, right, and making a big, uh, a big bid. But, yeah, oh, it's just really good. I don't want to get too nostalgic, but well, 25,660 all-seater stadium. I'm wondering if we can... Can we go so far back in time that look at these attendances? I don't know if it's going to remember. It is going to remember the games. Look at this. 1,249 people saw us beat Hereford back in the day. Well, no, we're away. That's not even at home. Home, 742. 799. What was our biggest home attendance in this game? Our biggest home attendance this season was 4,000 in a friendly against Bradford. So we had a 4,000 capacity stadium. Um, and it only we only got, got one new stadium, didn't we? We only went from, from Nethermore, that's it, from Nethermore in Guiseley. It's still there, apparently. Hasn't been knocked down. It's in good condition as well. Hasn't hosted a game for ages. We went from Nethermore, which was a 4,000-seater stadium, to... The Geisley Stadium, which is 25,600, hosting all of our teams, all of the youth teams, and us as well. Built in 2043. Now, normally, oh, is it 20? You might have to wait 20 years. That's amazing. We were in the old stadium until 2043, which means we were... Hang on, where am I trying to get to here? Club, club, no, club info. How long does that mean we're in that? 2043. We were there for 20 years. We were in the championship playing in that stadium. Oh my word. 2043. It had been upgraded to a 12,911-seater stadium. Because there are obviously two sellouts that we had here. But that is bonkers if you think we're in the championship with that sort of stadium. Wow. Wow. I mean, financially, we've made the club loads of money. The owners, loads of money. It's just been amazing, hasn't it? It's been absolutely amazing. I mean, transfers-wise, just to show you, I do think there was one season where we we actually signed someone. But if we go all the way back to the beginning, um, Scott Godden, obviously, this is the year that we holidayed. And then we joined. George Sikora left for a minimal fee to Newport County. And then it was just... I mean, there's probably going to be some names in here that I'd be very excited to look through, but I don't think I've got time to really judge what's going on. Victor Havezi was a goalkeeper that came through. I was very excited about him. Um, 
oh man, it was just so much fun this day. Razvan Marika, who was a Romanian right back or right midfielder, I think. Luis Otara, he was really good as well. Um, but you can see, no ins. I think we have one season where we signed someone on an in because our assistant manager signed it and uh, I just pressed continue accidentally. Uh, and then I turned that off. Nate Ampadu, Savas, Nicolau was in there. A few people, lots of loans. We started getting loans for experience very, very quickly, didn't we? Desado Marquez. Bloody hell. This is names ringing a bell here. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm glad I've gone back and looked. It's making me end on a high, um, which is good. Cyril Oconquo is still playing. No, he's a manager. He's not still playing. He's a manager. Wow. Cyril Oconquo. Kazushi, Kiddy. Oh, we've gone back to, I don't know, let's just go to 2040. You can see here loads of loans going out around this time now and uh yeah charlie carter nelson we sold him to bournemouth for loads of money and it was awful it was absolutely awful for them alex smurthwaite was another one we sold for loads of money to reading and he was awful but you can see here as we're going forward so many outs and then we started like oh there we go john harris joined on a free transfer and i didn't realize but he never played for us so it was fine he actually did have four seasons with us but he never played so um, it didn't break the rules. And then, yeah, just unbelievable, wasn't it? If we look at released players and go back to the beginning, right, obviously this is season four. Then we joined. We released one, Donald Chimalio. Um, and then, like, I'm going to assume there's just a bit where we don't release that many. There's a season where we had a culling, an absolute culling of players. Uh, this one, Job McKenzie lost his role in that season, 2030. Um, and then a little bit there, a little bit there. Three players is all we released in 2033. Uh, then we're getting a few more four that year, three that year, loads more that year. I think as our players get better, I'm expecting the list to just be quite long. I know towards the end, we did release quite a lot of players. We're in 2045 right now. It's pretty pretty even and a good number. Released. There we go. 2050 sees a huge clearing out of players that are never going to make it. 51 is still quite a lot as well. Okay, it settled down in 52 and 53. We obviously had a very set squad, um, and the youth players coming through were pretty good. Yago Thau left on a free. That's the one that got away, Yago Thau. And then uh, 57, 58, there was nobody. 59, we had a bit of a clear out. And then 60, we have uh, we got rid of five. And then this season, we had, again, a massive clear out at the end of this season, um, even though we're not doing another one. But, yeah, wow. That's, it's, I'm glad I've gone back and looked at it. I don't want to dive too much in. It is only a very quick rehab. But we've bought this club so far. Um, I don't know if I can go into uh, overview. This is Someone did tell me this, uh, that I wanted to show you. Time spent on holiday, 138 days, 1% of the game time. And that's just to get through errors or you know squad registrations when things go wrong and things like that. So... Yeah, not too bad. Um, that's not too bad. So it's probably actually a little bit higher than I would have thought. But I guess if we've done 39 seasons, one, that's like, what, two days a season? So it probably makes sense, I guess. Um, but there we go. 2,006 games played, 857 wins, 482 draws, 667 losses. We scored 3,263 goals, conceded 2,962, and had a win percentage of 42%. That's quite good. Four cup wins, two leagues, five promotions, and no relegations, which I think is very impressive. Um, yeah, very happy with that. Obviously, overall career stats are the same as this. Overall days in charge, 13,844 days in charge, which is ridiculous. Players bought, it says six. We definitely didn't buy six. That's a lie. Transfer value of zero. Players sold 76 for a value of 88 million. Um, highest transfer fee spent, there isn't one. Highest fee received, 14.5 million for the original Crimson Mori. We paid 7.5 million to agents and we released 167 players i've earned 33 and a half million over my career i've won 16 awards and obviously just the one job um i absolutely hate this feature but you never know it might come in handy so you can press play and it sort of moves things forward through the season so i think this will be a good thing to have in the background whilst i just say you know i've re I really enjoyed this save i'm gutted that we couldn't win we didn't win the premier league and we didn't win the champions league but to get to two Champions League finals back to back as well I think was absolutely amazing it's the, I think it's the first save I've ever done 2,000 games as a manager I've played 
pretty much all of them other than some friendlies and even then i played most of the friendlies as well your support has been absolutely amazing it's been incredible on this series it's it's made the channel grow it's got so many comments likes and new subscribers because of it it's been an absolute thrill doing this save and i've learned loads from it as well there's you know how much youth can improve how much personalities matter how much training facilities coaching having the right youth coaches with good personalities to help coach other personalities into the youth team is great mentoring has been a big stint in this as well and it's been great it's been good to see the the main thing for me is the involvement i think i wouldn't it would have been hard to stick with it if people hadn't of left comments like the videos subscribe to the channel and things like that and as you know as someone who does this as a, a hobby and i don't like saying things like oh if you want to pay a little bit more sign up to the patreon but it does all go back into the channel it does allow me to keep doing this and the comments interacting with you in the comments and on discord and things like that is what it keeps me going and keeps me doing it it's really really good fun and um i've really enjoyed it i've really really enjoyed it there will be something different for fm24 uh, we're not going to be doing another youth academy save i think it's a bit too much to be doing it back to back straight after each other especially as a youtube series maybe if i wasn't doing it on youtube i might do it but i think as a youtube series it's a bit much to do but um yeah we, we've done we've done really well i think the champions league back to back was just gutting the way we lost it as well to real madrid was absolutely gutting but uh there is nothing else left to say other than thank you very much please do continue to support the channel leave a like and subscribe if you got through this video this far and you're brand new i don't know why you wouldn't have subscribed by now if that is the point because this is episode 150 of 150 of a save that's just finished and i'm asking you right at the end of the video to subscribe but this has been magnificent thank you thank you so much i know you're all gonna you're, you say that you should be thanking me for giving you the content but yeah thank you so much for supporting commenting liking and subscribing and with that um i'll see you either on f1 manager if you're watching those videos or i'll see you for fm24 which is not very far away keep your eyes peeled for my beta save and then definitely keep your eye peeled for my long-term save but for now i'm out cheers